Hey, g'day guys, it's Calvin from the Cartoon Company in New Zealand. I frequently get told you can't run a 1UZ on a standard computer, you can't run them as a manual on a standard computer, or you have to trick them, and there's only five wires to connect. Let's prove that wrong. Let's have a look. Standard 1UZ FE. Standard computer, whole lot of wiring. I've connected up permanent battery power. An ignition and start. How many wires was that? Ignition, there's battery power, and start. There was only three. Still doesn't make that myth true because I spent a whole lot of time connecting a whole lot of other wires behind the scenes. These wires, these wires, and those wires. There's that myth proved completely wrong. You can run them on a standard computer, you can run them as a manual, and generally there's a couple more than five wires to make them run properly. Let's do a full explanation and have a closer look at that. G'day guys, it's Calvin from The Cartoon Company. I frequently get told you can't use the standard computer on one of your ZFEs. Get told it all the time. Or my auto sparky told me I can't use the standard computer. I also get told you have to trick the ECU um, when you convert it to manual. I'm gonna turn this off me and I'm working on a wiring loom at the moment and we'll have a bit of a chat about the wiring loom I'm doing and then we'll answer those questions. And hopefully just by uh, having a chat, you work these things out for yourself. On a side note, I happen to have a set of these extractors. This is on my test engine, and I've just been wondering. Here's a set of standard headers. This is a UCF20 set of headers. Look at that. That's like really, really close. I reckon if I glued a standard three volt flange onto the bottom of those cones, we would actually have a set of headers that would be a straight bolt on for a UCF20 Celsius. Right, back into it. Here is a wiring loop that I've received. And it is for a 20 series, one UZFE. So that's a UCF20 from 95 to 97 and I get into the loom and I'm looking over it having a bit of an analysis and as per normal there are lots of broken plugs so these connectors are broken and I've got a video coming up on connectors this one didn't come with an ECU and I've got a video coming up on that too on identifying what engine you've got because often you get a, a second hand engine from the dismantlers and you don't get told exactly what it is it's a front sump one you said this one i know just by looking at it very quickly in the design of the loom we've got this plastic piece over here and on this side we've got conduit coming through or split sleeve that's distinctively 20 series very very distinctively 20 series the plugs on the header so where it goes into the ecu these three so we've got a 34 22 and a 16 again distinctively 20 series however that is the same plugs as the second ecu used in the gen 1 engines this plug, very distinctive, uh, used on the 20 series in both the Gen 2 and into the VVTIs. They run that same 26 pin white plug. So it's, we know it's a, a Gen 2, we know it's a non VVTI, uh, we know it's a 1UZ. But exactly what model does it come from? And I got over here. I have this plug here which goes into the main, the front crank loom. It's got six pins. 
That is the same on all of them. However, this one has only got two here. If it was Japanese, I'm going to just turn this down. Oh, we got rid of the dinging from my phone. If that was Japanese, what I would normally see here is a four pin, meaning this is being a two pin, no hydraulic fan. The four pins have the hydraulic fan. So straight away, I know this is an LS 400 loom. Five zero. Five zero is the chassis number that the car, for the car. So Celsius and LS 400 have a five zero in that part of the part number. Uh, if you actually look on the, the engine ECU, now this isn't the one for this engine, on the engine ECU, 89661, all ECUs, but there are some exceptions to the rule. In the Toyota range, in the 1UZ, 89661 is on all of the ECUs, 5-0, so there's Celsius. If it was a Sora SC400, it would be 2-4. If it was Crown, it's 3A or 3O. And then we have the part number, 240. That's a Japanese Celsius. If we look at the loom, 82121-50300V. Pretty sure we've answered that because I'm about to wire it with the standard ECU. And you may note a lot of the time when I'm asked the question, I don't say how you should do it. I say how I do it. I can cut that bit. Or from the vehicles I have done, this is how I would do it. And there's a good reason for that. There are lots of ways of doing these jobs. There's plenty of right ways. So there's more than one way to do it. And there's a heap of wrong ways. So I'm very careful in the way I say something. So it's generally Oh, I'm trying to stab my hand. I already got it. Uh, this is how I would do it. Or I don't do it that way because I do it this way. And when I'm working on these looms, I pretty much follow the same process on all of them. I've got a way that works to get them done. Now with regard to that automatic loom, so here's the auto loom on this one. It is coming out, but we'll leave the auction sensor wiring. So that all is coming out. I'm going to flick this to part. We're starting to get into there and pull all the wires out of the ECU. There's two different ways. Oh, no, rubbish. There's two different ways of uh, doing them. So we've got the, the non-VVTI and the VVTI. Let me just get this all apart and we'll come back to you. Right, so when we're wiring these and you're taking out the auto stuff, the default setting is in gear. The, 
the ECU sees a signal for park neutral. So if you wire that circuit cor incorrectly, you will put it, uninvertedly put it into park. And I think that's what's happened in the past. A lot of people have put them into park by mistake, because they've wired them wrong, and then it doesn't run properly. I even saw one post from a supposed expert on these who listed one ECU that he never got running properly. There is not an ECU that you cannot get running properly as a manual on a 1UZ. All of them can be used. Some people try to say that the early model Crown, so that's the 131 Crown. I've actually got one of those ECUs here. So some say that this one is great to wire because it uh, didn't have the, uh, the auto control in the ECU, and that is the only one of the 1UZ ECUs. I am planning a video on identifying your 1UZ using the ECU. I also have got an EC, uh, one running coming on the connector plugs on a 1UZ. But back to the question, you have to trick it. You don't have to trick it. You just have to wire it properly. There is no tricking involved. Remove the wires, the early ECU will think it's in gear. Very, very, very simple. Now that's interesting. This one, for the start inhibit down in here, was bridged out. So someone may have been trying to start this. So the start inhibit is these two big wires and the shifter switch. And you can just pop a fuse across them like that. That's very interesting. So with the VVTI ECU, if you wire it up and you remove the transmission and its related wiring, they often don't rev properly. So a lot of people can't get them to rev. So the trick there is to put it in neutral. When you pop it into neutral, it will restart, it'll rev, and it'll drive fine. In doing so, it does help to take the lock out. I mail, it's hard to do two things at once. By doing so, you've just made your VVTi engine a non-VVTi engine. And that's probably not ideal. So in standard form, the VVTi's produce more power. Their standard computers are newer and better, I think, I believe. Though I still don't mind the old ones. And some I will still choose an old motor Older engine for simplicity. Sorry, I just had to think for a moment. With the VVTIs, so if you have converted it to manual and you are not running some sort of box like this, here's a little box. Here's a 1UZ VVTI ECU, quite different in design. And I'm not sure this one's going to be any good given the fact that it's had a, a sustained some damage. Well, I think I've probably got a spare case. If you're not running some sort of box to emulate the transmission, you don't have a VVTi. You have a non-VVTi engine. Hmm, rubbish. So other things you actually notice while I'm doing this is I'm popping the wires right out of the plugs. And it's the easiest way to make it neat and tidy and get rid of all those extra crap that we just don't need. And in this case it's 
the transmission loop. If you are doing it on one of your own jobs, I don't recommend just hooking wires out like I'm doing. I might have done one or two of these before. And I know I'm not using diagrams at this point, but I do have some here. So I do have my own set of wiring notes right here. The fact I'm not looking at them, at them is beside the point. This stuff's pretty straightforward. So I think we've answered the question, do we have to trick the ECU? And I, the answer to that is, if you're, running, if you're running a manual, you don't have to trick the ECU, you just have to wire it correctly. And to help you out with wiring it correctly, you'll notice I didn't say diagrams, I said instructions. So I do have instructions available on how to do this. I do have a video also on wiring a UCF20 where I've given away a whole lot of information, but it makes even more sense if you have my instructions. And right in here, the ones I'm doing right at the moment are to do with that start circuit. And the start circuit is the, the park neutral switch. And that's somewhere that people get a lot of things wrong. And the reason they get it wrong is it actually grounds back through that circuit. And if you are paying attention, you will notice that I just pull it out completely. Uh, don't be alarmed, I put it back in later. It's just easier for me to get rid of these wires with joins in it and run one wire and crimp in new ones at the end. And that is how you should also do a manual swap on a UZ. You should remove all this crap here for the auto. Again, you might have noticed, just as I said, I took the park neutral switch circuits out. I will put one of those back in. And they're contained in my diagrams. The traction control is gone. I'll be doing the extra, the sub TPS and going through these plugs. Oh, actually someone wanted a picture of that. I'll find that as well. So here, here we have that loom. Here we have that engine. Here we have a standard computer. Here we have my earmuffs. We have some ignition power. And we have a starter. <laughs> 